I better speak fast. This sun is hot. This sun is hot. So did anybody notice, I'm sure you didn't, that we flew over right over you, right? We have the greatest pilots and the greatest equipment anywhere in the world. I said, I wonder if there'd be any danger. No, sir, don't worry. Fwah. And then flying over, I noticed something, right? I saw this crowd, and then I saw a crowd bigger than this over there trying to get in. Can you believe it? Let them in. Let them in. Let them in. They're coming in. Just let them in. I thought we could wait. Would you like to wait about an hour as they peel in? Do you have speakers back there, please? All right. You know, the fake news, they never report this stuff, right? Right? And they don't. Sleepy Joe Biden yesterday had seven people, and then they say, he's tied in the polls in Pennsylvania. You know, no, I don't know. There's something going on here. There's something phony going on. So, you know, the votes are coming in, and uh, they're very much uh, inclined to be with us. I don't know if you see. You know, early voting. Because our people like to go out, like, and vote. Right? They like to vote. They like to vote. And uh, it's incredible what's happening. So the early votes are coming in in a lot of areas, and they're starting to get a little bit nervous on the other side. In Michigan, we're leading the early vote. We're supposed to be at 20 percent, and then we catch them right in the final days like a racehorse. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's going to be very big. You don't have events like this, and you come in second in Arizona, okay? You don't do that. You don't say... I don't like, I don't like saying, let's leave now. Goodbye, you 25, 40,000, whatever the hell number of people. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, we're in second place in Arizona. You know, I don't think so. No, we're, uh, we're in first place in Arizona. But, you know, these fake people back here, the press, the media, they're fake. And same thing. Same thing happened last time, only worse. It was crazy. And last time, I never did it before, so I believed them. And then what happened is we had the day, and I was down in nine states that I had to win, right? I was down in all nine on election day, and we won all nine, right? No, they said, they said, this will be a very poor day for Donald Trump. That time, Donald Trump, right? This is going to be a rough day for Donald Trump down in nine states. End of the evening, then you saw them cry. Remember the guy with also John King? Oh, my God. He just won Wisconsin. He just won Michigan. He just won Arizona. He just won Pennsylvania. What's going on? No, they were not having a good day. They were not having... This is going to be even better, I think. I mean, the only difference is the one the big risk is they sent out tens of millions of these unsolicited ballots. And we're trying to find out who do they send them to? When do they send them? Where do they send them? Who sends them back? Some of these governors say, you don't need certain signature verification. Why would you need a thing like that? No signature verification. In some cases, you don't need a signature. Why would you need a thing like that? No, they found 50,000 in a river. They found 53,000 in a creek. They found many in a garbage can. They happened to be from the military. Many of them, they were in a garbage can, they found them. And they all had the name Trump on. Isn't that shocking? They were military, all in favor of Trump, and they found him in a garbage can. I got to tell you, that's the only thing I'm concerned about. And we have law enforcement watching every one of them. But they have, they have, and you have to watch them too. Fifteen days from now, we're going to win the state of Arizona, and we're going to win four more years in the White House. Everybody needs to get out and vote. Return your absentee ballot today. 
Or vote early in person as soon as you can. When is that starting, the early? When does that start now? Now. Get out now, right? I like that better. Bah. Bah. You know, you always get this, but... Yeah. And your state is doing great. You have a great governor, as you know, and your state is doing great with a pandemic. Pandemic. They're getting tired of the pandemic, aren't they? Getting tired of the pandemic. You turn on CNN, that's all they cover. COVID, COVID, pandemic, COVID, COVID, COVID. You know why they're trying to talk everybody out of voting? People aren't buying it, CNN, you dumb bastards. They're not buying it. That's all they talk about. I watch this guy's got lousy ratings. Fredo, you know Fredo? He's got horrible ratings. He's talking about the pandemic. That's all they talk about, you know? I don't know. He said he had it. I'm, I'm not sure he had it. He went to the basement. It's the only time his ratings were up. People want to see what was going to happen. He'll probably get it again, even though in theory you're not supposed to be able to. Well, I had it, and they say you're not going to catch it again, and that's okay with me. That's okay with me. Oh, were they happy when they heard I had it, right? Did you see it? Oh, that was... They would try, well, we hope he gets better. <laughs> we, uh, we hope he gets better soon. And then I came out, and I did a rally, and I said, this guy hasn't changed. Actually, I say, i not saying, I don't know if this is a compliment. They said, he looks better now than before he had it. What's that all about? What's that? Who knows? If you have it, you have it, you get better. But we have great therapeutics. We had, I took something, uh, Regeneron, which we're making available to everybody free. But to me, it was a cure. It wasn't a pen. It, well, it really, it wasn't a therapeutic. To me, it was a cure. I took it. I didn't feel so great. I will tell you that. I don't like to admit that, but it's been a long time. And I didn't feel too great. And when you're president, you have a lot of doctors checking you out, right? I told the story last night. We, we went, by the way, these rallies, they're unbelievable. And I like this better. Remember, we're outside. They all want us to be outside, you know? They're, they're all wanting us uh, to be outside. And these are outdoor rallies. And we can hold more people than we can in the arenas. These are the biggest rallies. These are the biggest rallies ever had in history by a political candidate. They won't say that. No, it's great. It's great. But I took it, and it was incredible. Incredible. And I was out. I took it. I felt like Superman. The next morning, I woke up. I just, ah, let me out. With your vote, we will continue to cut your taxes and regulations to maintain your energy independence strengthen our military, support our great police, protect our Second Amendment, which is under siege. Defend our borders, arrest violent criminals, and confirm more judges to uphold the rule of law. We have a record number of judges, you see that? A record number of federal judges, and we have a great one right now, hopefully gets approved next week. Amy, under my leadership, prosperity will surge, patriotism will soar, optimism will boom, the pandemic will soon end. It's rounding the corner. They hate it when I say it. You know, they always like to say about Europe and this and that. Really? Oh, really? How are they doing? How are they doing? I'll tell you what, and we're working with them. We're sending them ventilators, we're sending them everything, but we're rounding the turn. We're going to have the vaccine, but with or without it, and it's happening soon, by the way. It would even happen sooner if we didn't have these characters on the other side, the Democrats that are running all these failed cities. The Democrats are running your failed cities, you know that, right? And states. But if they weren't talking, because they don't want it to be, you know, they, they don't want it to be successful. I really mean it. But ultimately, it's going to all come together because it was coming together, and then we got hit by the China plague. We were going to all be well unified. People were calling me that you would have never expected. It was coming together because of success. And then we got hit by the plague. We closed up, which we did a great thing. We saved two million lives or more. Two million lives. We did a great job. We never got credit for it. 
We helped all of the states and the governors. Some did a good job. Some did a horrible job. I'll tell you who they are one day. Do I have the all-time great book? I have the real book, right? But like a lot of these other people, I don't like writing books while I'm running. I don't like writing books while we're in office because you don't do that. Normal life will rapidly return. That's what we want. Normal. Go take us back, Seven. And next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of our country. That's what's going to happen. And we're going to cut your taxes. These, this guy's going to raise your taxes by four times. Think of it. And now he's saying, well, maybe I won't take away the tax cuts. Because he said, we're going to end the Trump tax cuts. They said, well, it's going to ultimately be $8,000 a family. He said, well, maybe we won't end them. That doesn't sound so good. He has, look, he's gonzo, folks. He's gone. He has no idea. And the people that are running that party are radical, far-left maniacs. And you can't let this. This is the most important election in the history of our country. This is an election that's a choice between a Trump recovery at the highest end or a Biden depression. You're going to have, with what he's going to do with regulations, what he's going to do with taxes, every company that came in from Europe, from Asia, every company is going to leave as soon as the, I'll tell you what, even the thought of it. As an example, Foxconn. Foxconn in Wisconsin, incredible company. It makes a lot of the Apple equipment stuff, right? The phones, the iPhones, the iPads. Incredible company. They don't like the Democrat governor. They don't want to spend the money. They want to come in and spend a lot of money. They don't like the possibility that a sleepy Joe could get in. They don't want to invest billions of dollars in having those policies. So they pull back. If Trump gets in, they will spend billions and billions and billions, not your state, but Wisconsin, probably your state too. Billions of dollars. But we speak to them. They're unhappy when they see this Democrat kind of leadership or even the chance that it is. So wait till you see what Foxconn does in Wisconsin, okay? Different place, but wait till you see. If we win, they will make an investment the likes of which our country has rarely seen before. But this is all a choice between getting a safe vaccine or really a lockdown. You know, Biden wants to lock it down. He wants to listen to Dr. Fauci. He wants to listen to Dr. Fauci. And don't forget, Dr. Fauci, what he said is, no, no, don't close it to China. I said, I'm sorry, doctor, you're a wonderful man. And he is a nice man. You're a wonderful man, I'm closing it. I saved thousands of lives. He admitted that two months later, two months later. And Dr. Fauci said, don't put on masks. Don't put, you see the thing. And now he says, put on masks. And they say, you know, he's a wonderful guy. And he is a wonderful guy, I like him. He just happens to have a very bad arm. He has a bad arm, but he's a good guy. He's a good guy. A lot of our people don't like him. I like him. You have to understand him. He's a promoter. <laughs> what can I tell you? And it's a choice between the American dream or a totally socialist nightmare. That's what you'll have. You'll be a socialist country. And I said, our country will never be a socialist country. We're not going to let it happen. We'll be destroyed. Joe Biden has made a corrupt bargain. By the way, he's made many corrupt bargains, if you've been reading. You know, he's all shut down again. Can you believe it? He's going lid. You know what lid means? Lid means a politician goes into, I guess, a garbage can or something. Put the lid. They put the lid on it, right? I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's something else that sounds... No, there's an expression they kept saying, Sir, uh, the vice, vice president... Our vice president, Pence, is working his ass off, I'll tell you. He's, he's all over the place. He's great. Did he do a good job against Kamala? If that were a fight, they would have stopped it. Now, Pence is great. But uh, they put the lid on it. Every day you wake up, where's Biden today? Sir, uh, he's uh, littered out. He's littered out. What does that mean? That means he's going to stay in the basement all day. But I think uh, today he's staying in the basement to talk to his lawyers. They caught him, Cole. They caught him, Cole. I'll tell you something, and I mean this, so he is lucky that we have in our country, and they don't appreciate, a wonderful human being and the most fair 
Attorney General of the United States, because I know people that would have had him locked up five weeks ago. Bill Barr is a very nice man and a very fair man, and they have no idea because somebody else would have taken that thing and all the crap and corruption. He's been a corrupt politician for a long time, this guy. And in many ways, it doesn't make some of us happy, but in many ways, Bill Barr is a wonderful human being and a very fair person. And he's not a person that wants to hurt people. Just remember that. I say it, and I say it once. Just remember it, because I get angry too. But just remember it. He's a very fair man. And in many ways, and especially in that position, there's something very nice about it. Okay? So, what can I say? Joe Biden has made a corrupt bargain in exchange for his party's nomination. He has handed control of his whole group over to the socialists, the communists, the Marxists, and the left-wing extremists. You know that. You see them marching up the streets in these Democrat-run cities. You don't see them in the Republican-run cities. They're in charge, and they are calling the shots. If elected, Biden will delay the therapies. Look, I mean, even the vaccines, they're trying to say, oh, it's no good if Trump has it. It's being done by Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer. I don't even know who these people are, right? If it comes out with Trump, how bad is that? They are willing to demean a vaccine for political purposes. I saw it this morning. If it's — no, no. I saw it this morning where — a governor who's done a truly poor — thousands, tens of thousands of people have died in his state. Andrew Cuomo, he's done a terrible job. 11,000 people died in a nursing home. He could have put them in the convention center that I built. He could, we opened up 2,800 beds. We moved the big hospital ship. It was empty. He could have put them there. He put them back in, infected people back in with our elderly population, knowing that our elderly population is susceptible. Andrew Cuomo, he killed thousands and thousands of people. He's probably listened to his brother, Fredo. You know Fredo? Fredo. Now it's a shame. And you know, it's just a shame. But I saw him, he was knocking the vaccine. If the vaccine comes out during the Trump administration, we're not going to use it. It's nothing to do with me. It's Johnson & Johnson. It's Pfizer. It's Moderna. These are the greatest companies in the world. It has nothing to do with me. We need a vaccine, and when it's ready, it should come out. Already, it could, in my opinion, except for politics, they just don't want it to come out before the election. But you know what? I'm the one that did it. This thing wouldn't be here for two years, and they're ready to come. But it's a shame. It's a shame when you try and demean something so important for politics. It's a shame. But. They'd like to postpone the vaccine, prolong the pandemic, close your schools, shut down your country. We're not doing it. By the way, you have — you have a great governor, the way he did it. You have a great governor. He's here someplace. We're going to introduce him. Where the hell is the guy? Where's that guy? I don't get up yet. I'll introduce you. You'll have your chance. Don't get too much sunburn. The governor didn't tell me it was going to be this hot out here. Does anybody have a little sunblock? I'd love to use it right now. I'm always preaching to my kids, sunblock, sunblock, and here I am like an idiot, but that's a okay. He'll massively raise your taxes, Biden. He's going to raise your taxes. First time I've ever heard of a politician. He wants — he's running on raising taxes. That's how crazy the world has become. All my life, I see politicians, they want to cut your taxes. We're going to cut your taxes. The other guy says, we're going to cut it more. Well, this is an easy one for me, then, because we're cut them in. We gave you the greatest, biggest tax cut in history. And he's going to give you the biggest tax cut in reverse, because what he's going — he's going to end ours, but he's going to give you the biggest tax increase in the history of our country. Now, now think of it. Think of it. Who the hell can win with that platform? And if you listen to these people, this election is tied. We're three points up in your state, but I don't know. I think — how can you be three points up when we have crowds like this and nobody shows up? Three points. Three points. Now, so he wants — so we're cutting your taxes. He's increasing your taxes. Just those two things. Isn't that sort of the end of the election? Now, we can make the case, you know, something's good. It will destroy your 
401ks. It will destroy the stock market, which is ready to reach new historic. Can you imagine rounding the turn on the pandemic and we have the highest stock market we've ever had? Think of this. And some of our numbers are higher than they were. Housing and different things. Some of our numbers are higher than they were even before the pandemic. I mean, it's pretty amazing. You know why? Because we built such a strong foundation. If we didn't have that strong foundation, this would be a disaster. He wants to bury you in regulations, outsource your jobs, dismantle your police departments, dissolve our borders. He doesn't want borders. The wall, by the way, is almost finished. And you have the strongest southern border you've ever had. He wants to confiscate your guns, get rid of your Second Amendment. He wants to ban American energy, no fracking. How about that? For a year and a half, he says no fracking. Then he goes to Pennsylvania. We have a million jobs. The state is dependent on it. And all of a sudden, he says, oh, well, I guess we can frack. And the press doesn't call him because they are more corrupt than Biden himself. They want to wipe out your private health care plans. A lot of people have 180 million people have private health care, and they love it. They're so happy, and it's all going to disappear. You will be able to go to your local hospital ward and stand in line for six weeks when you have a cold or when you have something worse. This is what's going to happen. He wants to terminate your religious liberty, destroy the suburbs. They're not destroyed. We ended the regulation. I ended it. You know that? Women of the suburbs, please raise your hands. Okay. Look at it. Look at that crowd. So women of the suburbs, look, here's the start. Women of the suburbs. The fake news has been saying the women of the suburbs. They said this last time, too. Women don't like Trump. And then they saw... Then they saw 52% voted for Trump, right? I said, why don't they like me? They don't like me. They couldn't give. And then after we won, they said, women, women came out for Trump. What happened? Women. I like women. I like women. So anyway. No, but listen. Here's the story. They said suburban women. I used to call them suburban housewives. I got killed all the time. I said, oh, I better go politically correct. And I'll bet there's not, is there one woman here that minds being called, if you're married at least, a suburban housewife? The only one, <laughs> she wants to be called, she said called. No, the only one that minds are those characters, a lot of people up there, the press, right? That's the only one. The rest of them don't. But you know what? In keeping with, in keeping with our modern era and being politically correct. So the women in the suburbs. So you have a regulation now that's a disaster. It allows low-income housing to be built right next to your American dream. What ultimately it means is crime will come pouring. And you know what? These Antifa people and the radical left, and it is the radical left, it is the radical left, the radical left, the next place they want to hit are the suburbs. They say it all over, right? And what I did with the regulation, my people came and he's great, Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson. He's great. But Ben came to me, sir, we can, I said, I want to get rid of that regulation. It's a horrible regulation, getting worse all the time. And I've watched it for years. You've all watched it, right? Where they destroy these incredible communities. And Ben said, well, we can really bring it down and make it much more palatable. I said, no, Ben, you know what? That's going to be more controversial. Terminated. He said, yes, sir, he terminated. We terminated it. You have no more regulation. Now, if sleepy, crazy, crooked Joe gets in, I don't know. He shouldn't be allowed to run, frankly. If that were me, if that were me, they wouldn't allow me to run. If that were me. Can you imagine if Don Jr. had the problems of Where's Hunter? Right? Don Jr. Oh, my poor boy. Boy, what that boy's been through. What that guy's been through. I don't know. Ivanka's different. She sort of floats through life. You know, she's, she's pretty amazing, I tell you. She's pretty amazing. And Eric, Eric has been great. But what they went after my kids. 
and I restrict him from doing things. I mean, can you imagine the money my kids could be? Dad, let's build a hotel in Saudi Arabia. I restricted him. I said, you can't do anything. Let's go build a couple of hotels in, uh, in uh, name any place in the world we'll have them, right? And you know all the money that Biden's raising? He did $350 million. I would be, Doug, the greatest fund... I'd make Doug look like a bad fundraiser. I would be the greatest fundraiser in history. All I have to do is call up the head of every Wall Street firm, head of every major company, head of every major energy company. Do me a favor. Send me $10 million for my campaign. Yes, sir. I, they say the only thing is, why didn't you ask for more, sir? I would, I would be... I would take in more money, but you know what? I don't want to do that. Because if I do that, I'm totally compromised. Because when they call me, you know, you're a loyal person. And what happens is, hey, you know, you'll do things that are a lot more money. So when the press says, and we're raising a lot of money, we're raising a lot of small money, a lot of 61, 62, you know, no Republicans ever done that. But when I start calling, I would be, a, I would be the greatest fundraiser in history. Don't forget, I'm not bad at that stuff anyway. And I'm president. So I call some guy, the head of Exxon. I call the head of Exxon. I don't know, but, you know, I'll use a couple. Hi, how you doing? How's energy coming? When are you doing the exploration? Oh, you need a couple of permits, huh? Okay. But I call the head of Exxon. I say, you know, I'd love to send me $25 million for the campaign. Absolutely, sir. Why didn't you? Would you like some more? And if I make the call, now people make the call, it's different, you know. But if I made the call, I will hit a home run every single call. I would raise a billion dollars in one day if I wanted to. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. I put in a lot of money when I ran originally. I put in a lot of money into this campaign, you know, my primary campaign. And I never thought it was appreciated. They don't even, they'd never give me credit for it. But I gave up my salary. You know, I gave up. So the president's paid. No, but nobody ever talks about it. You know, every month, there's sleaze, because they're sleaze, most of them. Not all of them. That guy's a good guy. But that, he really, you do have a couple of good guys, but not many. But every month they call, and has the president given up his check? I don't have to, you know. I'm the only president, they say, maybe I'm wrong, they'll say, you know, 100 years ago, somebody else did. I'm the only president that did not accept the salary, which surprised me, you know. It's 450000 The only reason I mention it is they never talk about it. They never talk about it. But what they do do is they call up every month. Did he give up his check? And Kaylee, where's Kaylee? Is she here? Where's Kaylee, our great girl? Where's Kaylee? Kaylee! She's a rock. Oh! Come here, Kaylee. Wait. So she just recovered from COVID. Can you believe it? Stay away from me, Kaylee. No, Kaylee. Is it true? They call all the time. Did he give up his check, his salary check? And she's always like, okay, they never write about that. If I ever didn't give it up, it would be headlines. Trump refused. These people are the worst. But is that true, Kaylee? Say a couple of words. That is absolutely true, Mr. President. And let me tell you this, guys, with your help, we can beat social media, we can beat the media, because we have the greatest fighter in the history of this country in President Donald J. Trump. Thank you. She's so great. She is so great. I didn't know she'd be that good. That was good. Sometimes they get people up and they bomb. You know, they bomb. You know, she's married to a professional Major League Baseball player. He got lucky. He got lucky. Thanks, Kaylee. But it's true. It's true. But I'd be the greatest fundraiser of all time. 
For the last 47 years, Sleepy Joe Biden shipped away your jobs, shut down your factories, threw open your borders, and ravaged our cities while sacrificing American blood and treasure in these ridiculous, endless foreign wars of countries that you've never even heard about, right? You never even heard their name. So sad. They're all coming back, you know that. Joe Biden is a servant of the globalists and the lobbyists and the wealthy donors, the people that I could be calling. Oh, would I have fun? I would have fun. I'd like to come. Maybe I should call and put the money in escrow and just give it back to him. And the Washington vultures who got rich bleeding America dry. That's what happened, including Big Pharma. In 2016, you voted to fire this corrupt and decrepit political establishment, and you elected an outsider as president who is finally putting America first. It's about time. Fifty-six percent. Did you see this? Fifth, and we're in a, pand a pandemic, okay? Because of China, we're in a pandemic. A poll just came out, Gallup. Fifty-six percent of the American people in this brand new poll just came out, Gallup poll, say they are better off today than they were four years ago under Obama Biden administration, and it's a record number. Will you do me a favor, one, just one favor today? Will you please go out and elect Martha? Stand up, Martha. Great, great pilot. When we came in low with the helicopter, she said, I wish she could have been 200 feet lower. I said that we would only had 10 feet clearance. She said, I don't care. She was a great pilot. The warthog she flew. The warthogs are an incredible plan. Get her elected, will you please? I don't want to waste. We don't want to waste a lot of time, Martha. Get her elected, okay? Please. That other guy, he's bad news. I mean, he's good if you don't like. Does anybody not like your Second Amendment here? Because he will vote to get rid of your Second Amendment. You know that, you know? I mean, I know the whole thing of the history, and it's a sad deal, and all of that stuff. But he's a radical leftist, and he's going to vote to take away your guns. And somehow, somehow, Arizona and no guns don't seem to match up very well. He's going to take away. And I'm, I'm much more blunt, I think, than Martha. She's a nicer person than I am. I say it very directly. He's going to vote to take away your guns. Now, I don't know that he'll be successful, because hopefully he's going to have to go through me. But what the hell do we need that there for? She will be a great senator, and she has been a great senator. And, you know, she was appointed by Doug, and Doug is one of the best governors in the country. And he didn't close you down, and you couldn't breathe like in Michigan. You know, the court, the Supreme Court overruled her in Michigan. And, you know, part of the problem she had, the only one that had his freedom was her husband. He was allowed to go swimming, fishing, boating. Everybody else is on shore, and they see this guy boating. And who was it? It was the husband of the governor of Michigan. That didn't help their case, by the way. But, but no, I mean, the people in Michigan, I love them. We're leading in the polls in Michigan. But think of it. You know why? Because we have many car plants. They didn't have a car plant opening in 42 years. And then I came along. Now they got so many of them, they don't know what the hell to do. We'll send some to Arizona, okay? And you already have them We're opening up in Arizona. No. But you know, they got to open up the states. They got to let the kids go back to school. Barron, Barron Trump. Barron Trump had it, all these young guys. Barron Trump had it. He's very, you know, he's 14 and he's very tall. He is very tall. But Barron had it. And the doctor said, our first lady had it, I had it, Baron had it. Sir, uh, Baron tested positive. I said, oh, wow. How's he going to do? Very good, sir. No problem. I said, good. Like 14 minutes later, how's Baron doing? How's he doing, doc? How's my boy doing? Uh, sir, he's cured. Uh, how did that happen? <laughs> you know? 
It took about 12 seconds. How's Baron doing, Doc? I want to be, I want to make sure my Baron's okay. Sir, he's fine. Uh, well, what do you mean he's fine? No, he's all 100%. Can you believe it? Because I hate to admit it, all of us people that are slightly older, their immune system is uh, strong, very strong. So Baron had it. It came, it went. He's immune. You know, that's the way it is. Oh, those kids, those kids. I looked at Baron like he was Superman. I said, Baron, you're my man. I said, how you feeling? He didn't even know what I was talking about, actually. <laughs> Joe Biden is always and has been a corrupt politician. And as far as I'm concerned, the Biden family is a criminal enterprise. If you read, if you read, if you read this uh, laptop, I tell you what, this is called the laptop from hell. The only laptop that was almost as good, maybe worse, was the laptop of Anthony Weiner. You remember that? Ding, 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 ding. He got hacked too, just like Scully got hacked. Remember he said he got hacked? He was sending messages to very, very young women. Girls, girls, excuse me, girls. He was sending messages, a lot of them. And uh, he got hacked. They always say they got hacked. Scully got hacked, right? Scully. He was a never Trumper, he got hacked. You know, I've never known a person that said he got hacked, that got hacked. Nobody gets hacked. To get hacked, you need somebody with 197 IQ, and he needs about 15% of your password, right? Doesn't happen. So Scully got hacked. And now on Thursday, I go up another, another real great one, another great one, Kristen Welker. She's a radical Democrat. Look at them, they're getting angry. She's a radical Democrat. She deleted her entire account. Everything is deleted. But I've known her. She's been screaming questions at me for a long time, and uh, she's no good. But I figure, what the hell? She asked you a question. How did I do the other night against one that was worse? She was worse, Savannah. So I had Savannah Guthrie the other night. She was, she was like a crazed lunatic. She was literally rising out of her chair as she's screaming questions. And how about that great woman behind me? She kept going. I love her. I don't know too much. I met her right after. She's great. But I tell you, she was definitely a Trump person. They made a big mistake. You know, the mistake they made was they forgot to check the audience. The audience was great. And how about the woman that came up and said, I love your smile. I love your smile. You're so handsome. You're so handsome. You're so handsome when you smile. I love your smile. Sir, could I ask? And she was so nice. And then what happened is NBC, which is the worst, that's Comcast. I call it Con, C-O-N, because they're Con. You know, they spend a fortune in public relations, and I talk about them. Wipes out their whole year of public relations. Con, they're Concast. They're dishonest people, okay? Totally dishonest. So she said, really, I mean, look, this woman likes me. I know when somebody likes me. I know when they don't like me. It's very quick. It takes me like a fraction of a second. I love your smile, sir. You're so handsome. When you smile, you're so handsome. Could I ask you? Okay. Okay. Ready? Now they grab her. They said, this is not working out well. So they grab her. And I did, you know, I was long gone. And they interview her after. I do not like him. I do not. They told her, you can't do that. You got to say bad things. I have no doubt because I watched her interview afterwards. She hated my guts. She was going like, I don't like her. I'm going to vote for Biden. Why? Because he's a genius? No. Why are you voting for him? I have no idea. So that's what happens. We're dealing with a corrupt, crooked media. Just remember that. And I'm glad I came along because there's no other human being on earth other than maybe Doug Ducey that could have handled the crap that I've had to handle. I'll tell you what. Every other person, even a tough person, would have been in a corner long ago with his thumb in his mouth saying, Mommy, Mommy, take me home, right? They would have said, Mommy, Mommy, please, I can't take it. But me, I viewed it as a challenge. And what, what it really is, is we're exposing some real garbage. And you know, these tech companies are very dangerous because they refuse to allow even the New York Post, which deserves tremendous credit, they caught Biden in a scandal, the likes of which we haven't seen, I say the second worst in the history of our country. The first worst was when they spied on the President of the United States. 
and tried to take him down, and they spied and they got caught. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. That's to be the worst. This could, this is the second, but this could be leading into the first. I mean, you know, this is, this is, this is a grave, grave problem. But you're lucky I'm your president. You're so lucky. You're so lucky. I always tell our great first lady, darling, you're so lucky I took you on this wonderful journey as we get hammered by these fake people. We get hammered every day, and I say, darling, you're so lucky I took you on this journey. Uh, but they do love Michelle Obama. They love her. They love her. They love Michelle. You know, did you hear the new one? They came up to me, sir, I have bad news. What? President Obama is going to start campaigning for Sleepy Joe. I said, is that good or bad news? Because don't forget, he campaigned for Hillary harder than Hillary did, right? He said, he will not get the nomination. I got the nomination. He actually said, he will not run. I ran. He will not get the nomination. Got the nomination. He will not be your president. I became the president. Right? Ducey thought I was going to win. Anyway, no, he's going to... You know, the funny thing about Obama, he, look, they worked together for a long time. Like I work with Mike Pence. They worked together for a long time. And he tried to talk him out of it because he knows he's not mentally fit to be president. We can't play games. You know, we can be nice and say, oh, he's wonderful. He's not wonderful. You know, two days ago he said, uh, it is very, uh, my much, uh, really great honor to be uh, running as a Democrat for the United States Senate. And he meant it. With me, I'd be joking, maybe, and they'd say, oh, the guy meant it. That's about the third time he said that, too. That's a little bit scary. See, that's not like something that, you know, you pronounce a word wrong or something. That's serious problems. And when he says that, like, it's great to be with you people today in the great state of Ohio. And they say, you're in Arizona. Oh, I meant Arizona. I love the people of Arizona. You know, I always say he's done that eight times now where he said, I've never done it. I've never done it. When I do, perhaps it's time to retire. You know, if you do that, it's disqualifying because it's so bad. Like, you could be, you know, Winston Churchill was a great, great speaker. You could do that. So we're in Arizona. And if I said, I love the people of Ohio and it's great to be with you today, right? The worst was when I think he said he was in Palm Beach and you have palm trees. And he said, it's great to be with the people of Iowa, right? Right? You know, there's something wrong here. Something going on, right? But he said just three times recently, but the last uh, two days ago, that he's running for the U.S. Senate. And uh, I'm actually happy he's running for this because, I mean, hey, look, he's the worst presidential pick in the history of presidential politics, I think. And I, I say this, and you know, they always take that one little set. Have you seen how dishonest they are? They'll take that one little section. I say, if I lose to him, it'll be a disgrace. So they don't put the first part in. They don't put the end in. They just, President Trump thinks he's going to lose to him because they take that one little section. So I have to be very, very careful the way, because they're so corrupt and so dishonest. But it is true. He's probably the worst in the history of presidential politics. Win, lose, or draw. Win, lose, or draw. This man should not be your president. Number one, he's corrupt. Number two, he's not a smart man, never was. Number three, he's seen better days. So, are you ready to, let's get, isn't this better than reading the stupid teleprompter? Yeah. So if I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician. If I don't always play by the rules of the Washington establishment, it's because I was elected to fight for you harder than any president has ever fought before. We're not going to lose our nation to socialist communists. We're not going to be losing our nation to Kamala, who's further left than Bernie. I'd rather have Bernie than Kamala. And you'll have a woman president someday, but it's not going to be Kamala. You don't want that as your first woman. You don't want Kamala. Furthest left, and she treated Biden so badly. There was nobody that treated and, and her poll number, she was tanked. She left. I don't know. That's the kind of thinking you've got. That's the kind of thinking you're, you're supposed to be voting for, I guess. Huh? I'm fighting so hard because I love my country so much. 
and because I'm determined to ensure that the forgotten men and women of this country are never forgotten again. That happened. So we're joined by a great group of warriors, and I, I really would love just to come up for a second. You do have a great governor and a great friend of mine, Doug Ducey. Come on up, Doug. And Senator Martha McSally. Come on up. Donald Trump will win the state of Arizona. Donald Trump will be returned to the White House. And on November 3rd, Martha McSally will join him in the United States Senate. And they will give us conservative judges on the Supreme Court. They will support the cause of life, and they will confirm Amy Coney Barrett. Joe Biden is wrong for America. Joe Biden would pack the Supreme Court. Joe Biden would make Washington, D.C. a state. Joe Biden's got to be sent back to the basement on November 3rd. And on November 3rd, we will return Donald J. Trump and Mike Pence as President and Vice President of the United States back to the White House. Thank you so much. Welcome back to Arizona, President Trump. Let's give it up for the president. Arizona, you know we have a choice. People are voting right now. We have a choice. We are on the verge of a great American comeback. And it's going to be greater because we're bringing jobs home from China with President Trump. We're going to make sure we support our men and women in blue and our border patrol. We keep America strong and safe. And you know that other choice is with Joe Biden and my opponent, Mark Kelly, who would be, who would be Chuck Schumer's 51st vote to ram through their radical agenda, to pack the courts, to open our borders, to pass the green bad deal, tax increases, taking away our Second Amendment. You know that Arizona's not going to let that happen. And you know... In my race, it's not just whether you like a fighter pilot or an astronaut. And I know you guys like a fighter pilot. Mark, Mark Kelly brought a communist China communist banner to space with him and flew the, Amer the communist, uh, the Chinese flag on his motorcycle. I fly the American flag. Mark, Mark Kelly's spokesman called police officers worthless effing pigs. And he still works for him. I back the blue. I got the blue with President Trump. Mark Kelly's organization, you know, the radical gun-grabbing organization, they gave California an A grade for their gun control policies. And they, gave, and they gave Arizona an F. I got an idea. Why don't we give Mark Kelly an F and tell him to go run in California if he likes him so much? Mark Kelly said that he would not vote for Amy Coney Barrett. I'm flying on Air Force One tonight with President Trump back to D.C., and we're not leaving until we put Judge Barrett on the bench. <laughs> Arizonans, we're ground zero. The country is relying on us. This state will decide to send President Trump back for four more years. This state will decide the Senate majority in stopping the radical left in my race. This state will save the Supreme Court and save the country. President Trump and the country is relying on us. Let's win in November. God bless you. Let's bring it back home.
Thank you. Look at that crowd. I wish these people would. Hey, can you put the cameras back there, please? Will you turn one of your cameras back? As far as the eye can see, it's people. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They never do it. You know, they never turn the camera. I used to think they couldn't, you know, physically it was like stuck. They couldn't do it. But they can, because whenever there's a little problem, that thing goes like a pretzel. It's unbelievable. But they never want to show these crowds. They never want to do it, because they're fake. Listen, we have a congressman who's a friend of mine, who's a warrior, Paul Gosar. Where's Paul? Where's Paul? Thank you, Paul. A warrior. A warrior. And a friend of ours who's incredible. She's leading, from what I'm hearing, Tiffany, I hear she's leading, congressional candidate Tiffany Shedd. <laughs> Tiffany, you're leading in the poll. Wow, that's a long way. She's incredible. What a great career, and that you're doing this is so great. Thank you, Tiffany. Tiffany Shedd, get out and vote for her. And a friend of mine, somebody that was great, she would have been, uh, if she didn't have three, four people running at the same time, she would have been your senator. Hate to say it, she would have been your senator. A friend that's uh, so loyal and strong, but and a good person, Arizona GOP Chair Kelly Ward. She's worked so hard. She is some warrior and fighter and just... Yeah, they don't even understand it, okay? I don't even understand you sometimes, Kelly. You don't? She doesn't give up. How are we doing, Kelly? We are winning. We're winning. We're winning. Yeah. Good. Get out there. 15 days, Kelly. Every Don't sleep. Don't go to bed. Don't sleep. Right? And Sergeant Jimmy Chavez of the National Troopers Coalition. Jimmy, where's Jimmy? Jimmy. Thank you for everything, Jimmy. Thank you for everything. And I was recently honored to receive the coalition's endorsement. And I want to thank you. You're really amazing. Thank you, Jim. And a tough guy and a good guy. In addition, I was just named, I have to say this, Man of the Year by Law Enforcement's big magazine. It's called Blue Magazine. Man of the Year. I love law enforcement. So we're delighted to be joined by a legendary quarterback. I used to watch this guy. You know, he'd win with the brain as well as the body. Jim McMahon, two-time All-American at Brigham Young, and later a two-time Super Bowl champion. Where's Jim? Where is he? I love that guy. Look at him. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. I'll tell you, and I loved your coach, too. I loved Mike Ditka. And I love Singletary. You know, Singletary likes Trump. You know that, right? You think Singletary's tough enough? How huh? was he tough enough? Look at him. He just, he's all business. He's taking those pictures. That's him. Jim, you were a winner, man, and you are a winner. I mean it, too. And say hello to Ditka, and say hello to Singletary and all those guys. What a great team, right? I was a team of champions. You know, you win with the muscle, but you got to win with this, too. You got to win with this, too. We just... Uh, we just gave out a presidential medal to a great fighter, Dan. Does everybody know our Dan? Right out of Iowa, huh? And how about Jim Jordan? Is he a great one? Jim Jordan, right? He was a great wrestler. We had so many, uh, we have so many people that are behind us. Anyway, great to be with you, Jim. Thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. Dan Gable, everybody. You know Dan Gable? Did you ever hear of Dan Gable? Hey, Jim, he was 182 wins and one loss. He won everything. And he was an unbelievable coach at Iowa, Dan Gable. And then, think of it, a career, 182 and one. In fact, I asked, who was the one? I guess he was pretty good. But he ended up beating him in the Olympics. And then he went to the Olympics, and he won the Olympic gold medal. Dan Gable, any wrestling person would know. And in Iowa, Dan Gable is like a legend, and he is all over the country and in the wrestling world, the greatest ever. And he goes to the Olympics, and he never lost a point. And in the final, he had to wrestle the Russian, who was supposed to be unbeatable, but he was supposed to be unbeatable too. 
and he beat the Russian and never allowed a point. He went through the entire schedule and never allowed one point. Think about that. And he won the Olympic gold medal. And Dan Gable is now getting the Presidential Medal of Freedom. He's coming to the White House. So that's pretty cool. Thank you, Jim. Under my administration, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. And now we're doing it again. You know, it's make America great again, right? So now I go, make America great again again. Make it great again again. And that's what we're doing. We're way ahead of schedule. In my first three years, we increased family income by over $6,000 more than five times the gain. Think of this. Five times the gain. We were actually more than that. More than five times the gain in all eight years under the last administration. Five times the gain in a much shorter period of time. African-American unemployment and Hispanic-American unemployment and Asian-American un on American employment. Think of that. We all reached the lowest levels in the history of our country. African-American, Asian-American, Hispanic-American. We lifted 6.6 .6 million Americans out of poverty, including more than 1.5 million Hispanic Americans who are liking Trump a lot. I like you, too. I don't know if you see what's happening with Hispanic Americans. We are leading them in the polls. It's never happened before. I've always liked Hispanics, and they like me. This was not in their, this was not supposed to be happening, but I love the Hispanic Americans, and they're doing great. And by the way, they're great business people. Our policies are lifting up all Americans of every income. Since the China virus, we've created a record 11.4 million American jobs. Think of that. You know, we, did, we they just announced, think of this, it sounds terrible in one way. But you were hearing numbers like 42% unemployment. You know, it's not everybody's fault except China. It came in, and you were hearing it could be 42, 38, whatever. So they just announced it, 7.8% unemployment. We're going to be back to where we were very soon. Unless you put a fool into office who's going to raise your taxes and put back all the regulations where every company's going to leave. Now, think of it, doesn't 7.8, you know, at one way I don't like to say it, because we we're down to 3.4, 3.5. But 7.8, if you would have heard that three, four, five months ago, you would have said impossible. And we'll be back to the same number, and next year we'll be stronger than ever before. You watch. <laughs> After the virus left China, we experienced the smallest contraction of any major Western country and the fastest recovery by far of any country. Think of that. As president, I've been delivering for the incredible Hispanic American community like never before. I'm fighting for school choice, for safe neighborhoods, for Hispanic-owned small businesses. I have a couple of them. Some of where are my friends with the restaurant? Oh, they're doing so well. They made a lot of money, my restaurant. A couple of people didn't like that restaurant. I liked it. And now they have lines around the block. Joe Biden would obliterate everything Hispanic Americans have worked for, wiping out your small businesses with lockdowns and regulations, and devastating your families with massive tax hikes. He wants to give you the big, big, fat tax hikes. He will wage war on Catholic organizations, ban charter schools, bankrupt Catholic schools. We've already taken care of the funding for Catholic schools. Fund extreme late-term abortion and let socialists run wild in our country. And that's why we're going to win a record share of the Hispanic vote. There will never be a share of the Hispanic vote like this unless we decide to run again in four years and then another run. And another. We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military. We have the best equipment of any country in the world. We've upgraded our nuclear to a level that it's never even been close to. We have new rockets and missiles and ships and tanks. What we have is incredible. The F-35 fighter jet, the best in the world, stealth. Tankers, new tankers, new freighters. We have everything. $2.5 trillion all made in the USA. We are the envy of Russia. We are the envy of China. Nobody has the equipment, even the hydrosonic missiles that Obama messed up on. We have hydrosonic missiles. They go seven times faster than a normal missile. 
We have the best hydrosonic in the world. You know, uh, they stole our plans during the Obama administration. Another thing that happened. These are little things that happened that we don't, that I won't tell anybody, okay? We also passed for our veterans VA choice and VA accountability. Everyone said that would have been impossible. And last year, American warriors killed the founder and leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. We killed al-Baghdadi, and we have a very special person with us today. Just days ago, my administration brought two depraved ISIS terrorists known as the Beatles from the United Kingdom. These were two bad ones. These are people I would have liked to give to Jim and his team to work over. Jim would have liked that, I think. Jim would have been very happy to stand trial for killing of four American hostages, Peter Kasich, Stephen Sotloff, James Foley, and Kayla Mueller. As many of you know, Kayla came from right here in Prescott, Arizona. Beautiful, beautiful girl. And we're deeply moved, and she's been uh, thought of all the time. Her family, as you know, her mother and father came, and they spoke beautifully at the Republican National Convention. But we're deeply moved to be joined by her incredible and loving family, her dad, Carl, her mom, Marcia, and the entire family. We will hold Kayla's precious memory in our hearts forever. Just special. Please stand, please. 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 You look younger since I last saw you, you know? I'm looking. <laughs> you look very good. I want to thank you very much. What an incredible story. And you said if we were here if we were here earlier instead of Obama, she would have been with us today. She would have been with us today. And that's true. That's true. They could, have, they could have done that. They didn't do it. They just talk. They talk all the time. They don't do it. I want to thank you very much. Incredible. Her memory will never, ever be forgotten, right? And what a story it is. What a vicious story. What a horrible story. But he's dead. We also took out They've been looking for him for many years. He was the founder of ISIS, and he was rebuilding it because we obliterated the ISIS, 100% of the ISIS caliphate, and he was looking to build it again, and we got him. And you know, the guys that got him, I have a story that not a lot of people know. I think it was uh, Kayla's birth date, right? They used the birth date as the number, and they talked that number, that specific number. That was their code name for taking out this horrible al-Baghdadi, right? Great honor. They don't do that often. They don't do that often, but they use her, her birth date, and then they took him out. They didn't play games, and uh, a dog on that one became more famous than I did, and that's good. That dog was a hell of a dog, and still is. We also took out the mass murder of American troops and a lot of other people and a lot of other troops. Soleimani is dead. Soleimani, another one. And I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal. I recognized the true capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. Every president talked about that for decades and decades, and then they got to be president, and they never did a damn thing about it. I did it. I got it done. I even got it built for a tiny fraction of the cost. You know that story. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights for 52 years, they were talking. I got it done in about two hours. And instead of endless war in the Middle East, we're forging peace in the Middle East. Nations are joining one after another. The fact is, I did more in 47 months than sleepy Joe Biden did in 47 years, except what he did for himself. A vote for Republican is a vote for safe communities, great jobs, and a limitless future for all Americans. And this is such an important state. If we win this state, we win it all. This is a, such an important state. And I happen to love this state. So in conclusion, over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we will end our reliance on China once and for all. It's already started. 
We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will uphold religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. Second Amendment. We will strike down terrorists who threaten our citizens, and we will keep America out of endless foreign wars. They're coming home. They're all coming home. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. And that's what we have. We will end surprise medical billing, require price transparency, which is even more important, you will find, than health care. And it's already signed. I did it. it. Goes into effect on January 1st. I said, couldn't you have made it like a little back further? They said, statutorily, sir. But it's already signed and done. Nobody can believe it. Further reduce the cost of prescription drugs, favored nations. The drug companies don't like me too much. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars, and it's happening quickly. And we now, again, with NASA, have by far the preeminent space center anywhere in the world, not even close, and it was closed. It was dead. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our school. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. We will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of Arizona. So get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, get your co-workers, get your boss. Get out and vote. Get out there right away, right away, right? Right now. From Phoenix to Flagstaff, from Tombstone to Prescott, from Mesa to Yuma to Red Rock and Sedona and all over the place. This is so beautiful. How good is this place, huh? You got the most beautiful. Sedona. We stand on the shoulders of red-blooded American patriots who poured out their heart, sweat, and soul for our liberty and our freedom. This great state was settled by some of the toughest men and strongest women ever to walk on the earth. Jim, are you from here originally? Because you're tough. You're so tough. you close enough. <laughs> He's close enough. He's so tough. Arizona is where Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday became American legends. Wyatt Earp, right? That's a good one. That's a good one to have. It's where the great American West became the American dream. And Arizona is the state where generations of pioneers and prospectors and miners and ranchers, cowboys and cattle hands, marshals and lawmen, tamed the frontier, braved the blazing sun like I'm doing right now. I'm going to pay for this. I'm going to pay for this. Yeah, I'm giving you the full show. I could have left here a half an hour ago. I'm giving you. I said the hell with it. When you see me tomorrow and I look like a lobster, remember you did it. And showed the entire world how the West was won. They helped make America into the greatest nation in the history of the world. And the best is yet to come. It's coming. Proud citizens like you helped build this country. And together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. <laughs> we are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Arizona, 
We have made America powerful again. We have made America wealthy again. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Arizona. Get out and vote.
seamstress for the band. Pretty eyes, pirate smile. You marry a music man. Ballerina, you must have seen. She's in need 